What's up you guys, it's Steve here, and this is your stimulus check update and breaking news update. Now, first off, just wanted to say, hope that you and the family had a blessed weekend. Let me know what you did in the comments down below. Did you watch the Super Bowl? What did you think about the commercials? Congratulations to the LA Rams winning the Super Bowl. And also, happy Valentine's Day. Let me know if you and your loved ones are planning on doing anything special today. But I do have some stimulus updates for you, and we actually had an exclusive yesterday with Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. And she's going to be discussing inflation and how Build Back Better and stimulus packages that they're preparing are actually going to be combating inflation and taking away from the deficit and also where things stand with negotiations and Joe Manchin. As we're now seeing articles from that exclusive coming out like this. Take a look. Pelosi, it's not right for Manchin to say what we're doing is going to be contributing to inflation. Like I said, I've got the video footage so you can see it for yourself, hear it directly from her. As she's saying, they're going to get this done, it's going to help combat this, and they're going to be passing more stimulus. Now, in addition to that, I've also got some video footage for you that just came out on where things currently stand as of today between Ukraine and Russia and threats of potential war and attack, and where the US and NATO and all of us stand right now with everything going on. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you so you can get caught up on the latest in today's video. And also, keep an eye out for more upcoming videos today as I've got a lot more updates on states and cities coming out with checks. Gonna get all that information together and put it in a video for you upcoming later today as well. So you guys, let's go ahead and dive right in though, get you caught up on the latest, and let's start off by smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me out a ton if you appreciate the updates, just takes a second, thank you so much. Also, like I said, leave your comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts on everything. Share this out if you think it's going to help out other people. And if this is your first time here and you want to stay up to date, totally free to do so. All you got to do is hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. I'll keep you up to date on everything going on. And if you got any specific questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3. Easiest and best way to get a hold of me directly. And also, consider joining the second channel, Steve Ram Finance. It's gonna get up more content on there to help out people learn about personal finance and growing wealth. But let's dive into the video footage and let's start off first with the breaking news coming out about Ukraine and Russia. And then we're gonna be hearing from Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. We begin tonight with the breaking news and the crisis in Ukraine and the intensifying threat of invasion. One U.S. official says Russian action could come at any time. After speaking with the president of Ukraine today, President Biden said the U.S. would respond swiftly and decisively if Russia attacks. An estimated 130,000 Russian troops are now on Ukraine's border. These forces are conducting live exercises with allies in Belarus. All this is additional U.S. troops. Members of the 82nd Airborne arrived today in Poland to support NATO allies in the region. And while Ukraine's airspace does remain open, the country the country is advising airlines to avoid flying over parts of the Black Sea region. ABC's senior foreign correspondent Ian Panels on the ground in Ukraine and leads us off tonight. Tonight, with Russia performing massive military drills near Ukraine's borders, aviation officials in Ukraine warning airlines not to fly over part of the Black Sea where the Russian Navy is conducting war games. While Ukrainian commercial airspace remains open, Dutch airline KLM suspending flights into the country, Lufthansa considering the same. President Biden today speaking by phone with Ukrainian President Zelensky, making it clear the US and its allies will respond swiftly and decisively if Russia invades. Zelensky asking the US for even more military and financial support, even inviting Biden to visit the country. That call coming 24 hours after President Biden's high stakes call with Vladimir Putin warning a Russian attack would result in swift and severe costs. But despite the ongoing diplomacy, no apparent progress. It's certainly not a sign that things are moving in the, in the right direction. There's been a full-on diplomatic blitz this weekend. French President Macron speaking with Putin Saturday, where he again denied Russian forces intend to invade. And German Chancellor Scholz heading to Kiev tomorrow and then Moscow. Despite Russia's staunch denial that they're planning to attack, U.S. officials sticking to their dire warnings. The way they have maneuvered things in place makes it a distinct possibility that there will be major military action very soon. U.S. officials saying in just the last 10 days, Russia accelerated the buildup of its forces moving closer to Ukraine's border. 
Putin now has an estimated 130,000 troops amassed on three sides of the country, and the West believes it could launch an assault very rapidly. It's likely to begin with a significant barrage of missiles uh, and bomb attacks. It would then be followed by an onslaught of a ground force moving across the Ukrainian frontier. The US tonight again repeating warnings that a fake attack could be used to launch an invasion. No one should be surprised if Russia instigates a provocation or incident, which it then uses to justify military action it had planned all along. Analysts say the U.S. releasing intelligence on Putin's possible plans is part of a strategy. They're trying to preempt any kind of fabricated excuse that Mr. Putin would have to invade Ukraine. Life for most Ukrainians looks pretty normal on the streets. Families are out, people are going to restaurants and cafes and shopping. There is no sense of panic here, but people are certainly planning and preparing in case the worst happens. But despite the feeling on the ground, the State Department taking no chances, ordering all US citizens to get out of Kiev while they still can. Canada closing its embassy in Kiev and Australia today, joining dozens of nations urging citizens to leave. The State Department concerned they may not be able to evacuate Americans in the event of military action. Ian Panel joins us now from Ukraine tonight. And Ian, what more are you learning about that crucial call between President Biden and the President of Ukraine? Yeah, interesting. I mean, uh, Vladimir Zelensky thanked Joe Biden for his support, but he also invited him to visit Ukraine, saying that he's convinced that if he arrived in Kiev in the coming days, it would be crucial to help stabilize the situation, send a powerful signal, and also help towards de-escalation. I think it's highly unlikely to happen, but it shows you the mood in the Ukrainian presidential palace tonight. So there you have it, you guys. That is where things currently stand now. As more develops with that, I'll be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel. And also, like I said, We've got an exclusive with Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi discussing inflation, debt, stimulus, Joe Manchin. Let's take a look at this as well. Let's talk about the situation here at home. Families are feeling a hit from the highest inflation in 40 years right now, costing the average American family about $275 a month. What can Congress do right now to bring those costs down? Well, what, let me just talk about the inflation then, because people are saying, well, what we're spending is causing inflation. The fact that people have jobs always contributes to increase in inflation, and that's a good thing. But inflation is not a good, you know, we have to contain The that. wages are not keeping up with prices. That's right. And, and uh, let me just say about um, what Congress has been doing. When we did uh, the, um, the Competes Act last week, what contributes to inflation? People, more people having jobs. Scarcity of product, which, which makes uh, prices go up, and the rest. So when we passed the Competes Act last Friday, this was a giant step forward. Now we have to go to conference with the Senate, and we will shortly, and we'll send it to the president's desk. But what that does is address the supply chain shortages that we have, and therefore will decrease inflation. Secondly, it's important to note this about the BBB. The BBB is a deficit reduction bill. It's a bill that and some people say when you increase the national debt, you increase inflation. 17 Nobel laureates uh, wrote that the, the way the BBB was written with long-term investments and increasing the capacity of people to participate in our, our success is non-inflationary. In addition to that, the tax uh, the Joint Tax Committee, which is the imprimatur on all these issues, the Joint Tax Committee says that BBB will reduce the national debt by $100 billion in the first 10 years and a trillion dollars in the second 10 years. So what we are doing is, what are the three facts? More people going to work, that's a good thing. More product to lower the cost, uh, you know, the supply side of the supply and more supply, lower cost, and then third, and third in terms of, of not increasing the national debt. But as you know, Senator Manchin, who's the senator that matters right now because he's against it, disagrees. He says it's going to hurt inflation. Let's take a look. This is not a time to be throwing more fuel on the fire. We have, an infl we have uh, inflation, and we have basically uh, an economy that's on fire. You don't throw more fuel on the fire that's already on fire, causing the problems that we have. So we've got to get our house in order. Without his vote, this isn't going anywhere. Well, the fact is, is that uh, clearly he has, uh, look, uh, 
Joe Manchin, as you said, is the senator who counts. Every senator counts. And, and we have uh, uh, legislation that is so transformative for our country. When you see what President Biden has done in, in this year, whether it's the rescue package that, that has put money in people's pockets, taken people off of poverty, vaccines in their arms and the rest, you know that. Yes, then but people are feeling it right no, now. I They're upset. That. No, I understand that. But there has to be a cumulative effect. A cumulative effect, and part of the uh, consequences of all of that investment in the in infrastructure bill and the rest is that more people have jobs, and and therefore inflation goes up. When I first went to Congress, you were there working for Dick Gephardt. Dick and Dick Gephardt. Yeah, <laughs> going way back. The, I went to my first meeting of the where the head of the Fed came in to talk about inflation and unemployment. That was a requirement that the chairman report to Congress on that. And the first thing Chairman Greenspan said was, unemployment is dangerously low. Well, if you're just measuring it by inflation. But the fact is that the rise in employment and President President Biden, now, nearly 7 million jobs in his year in office. So, yes, we have inflation. It's very important for us to address it. We must bring it down. And, but it is not, it's not right, with all the respect in the world for my friend Joe Manchin, it's not right to say that what we are doing is contributing to inflation because it is exactly the opposite. The other thing that's weighing up... 17 before. Nobel laureates, the Joint Tax Committee... So there you have it, you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is saying we are dealing with inflation, but that's due to the fact that we've got other contributing factors like an increase in jobs, unemployment is down, also supply chain issues. And she's saying that those are some of the things contributing to this. And Joe Manchin saying that another stimulus package, adding more spending is going to be adding to it. She said it's not fair to say so because she's saying that uh, what they're doing with Build Back Better is actually going to be taken away from the deficit and over the course of 10 years, she had said that, uh, I think it was an additional 10, it was gonna remove a trillion dollars from the deficit. Now, let me know your thoughts. We had also heard otherwise, though, from the CBO, who said if we extend out a lot of the provisions in the Build Back Better, the previous version, that it would add substantially to the debt. So, uh, I'm not really sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but that is where things currently stand, and we've heard them say they're gonna get this done. They're gonna get Joe Manchin on board. They're gonna be passing more stimulus provisions to help out. We've heard lawmakers call for more stimulus to help out businesses. The president said he's gonna call out for more to help combat the pandemic, and we're gonna see if any more direct payments are gonna go out on a federal level. And I'll let you know here on the channel that we have heard that there's gonna be more provisions going out direct payments to people, but on state, city, county levels with UBI programs, various different levels, I will keep you up to date here on the channel. I'm gonna compile some more information, get another video out today to get you caught up on that as well. But you guys, that is the latest, and as always, thank you so much for joining me here on the channel. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget, take a quick second, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the channel a ton, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments, share this out. If this is your first time here and you wanna stay up to date, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, totally free to come join the RAM fam. I'll keep you up to date on everything going on. And if you got any specific questions for me, I'm easy to get a hold of directly. Hop onto Instagram, shoot me a DM at SteveRam3, and consider joining the second channel, Steve Ram Finance, to learn about growing wealth and personal finance. But with that being said, you guys, hope this reaches you well. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.